Hello everyone, we're on experiment 17 and this one was called Set Your Tone and I went ahead and kind of worked my way through uh, the couple of stages in this chapter because I didn't really feel like separating this out. Um, with that being said though, this circuit has a number of complexities that are kind of hard to, to spell out in a short video. So I'm not going to go over every detail but I'll just give you the high, uh, high, high view, uh, you know, high picture of what's going on here. So we have two 555 chips, and the idea here is, is that this chip drives this chip. So literally the output of this 555, um, it has many, uh, excuse me, we have a motorcycle going by. Uh, the output of this chip can uh, drive many different uh, pins on the input of another 555. You could use it to uh, uh, trigger your 555, or you could use it to actually power your 555, or you could um, use it to uh, control your 555, literally via the, the trigger 2 pin, the power 8 pin, or the control 5 pin. So you have a number of options, um, and there's probably more that I haven't spelled out here. Anyways, this circuit up top here basically has two buttons. Um, you can push this button to uh, basically power up this uh, chip which lights the LED up. And you could cut that, that oscillation cycle short because if, if you wanted to you could push this button to stop it immediately and it turns the light back off. But if you push this one um, it'll light the light up and um, given the uh, uh, the variable uh, uh, values we have for the capacitor and the resistor here uh, these two uh, work out to about a five second uh, on pulse before it uh, goes low again. So when this light lights up, the output also runs through that white line to the uh, positive supply of our ICC or our, uh, our 555 right here, which then actually turns on the speaker. And we can control the uh, pitch with this uh, potentiometer. So let's go ahead and turn our uh, power supply on. We'll put it up to, um, I want to put it up to about nine volts. And there we go. And all we're gonna do is push this and we should hear a pitch. So sound's coming out, lights on. The timer, uh, the first timer basically finished its oscillation cycle and uh, so, so yeah, I'm sorry, I should back up a moment. So this uh, 555 timer is running in uh, what's called monostable mode, meaning it is working in controlled pulses, like uh, it, it does not have a, uh, an oscillation cycle like this guy does, who is in A-stable mode. And the key distinction you'll notice is this 555 has a wire running straight over the top of it that's literally running from uh, pin 6 to pin 2. And that allows us to actually create this um, self-perpetuating oscillation, uh, whereas this 555 does not. And that's why this guy is um, literally a controlled pulse, meaning it only responds to push or to some trigger mechanism to generate one out pulse. So if I push this button, I can quickly adjust this potentiometer. As you heard, I can control the pitch. See how low I can go before it. I think that's about it. Yeah. And needless to say, my connections on these guys aren't that great. So if I were to jiggle these, All right, let's see here. Hold on. See? Kind of got a little bit of loose wires going on, but you get the idea. And to stop it, I could push that. So that's pretty much it. The uh, one thing that uh, stumped me on this ex on this experiment, um, it actually stumped me for quite some time, was the diagram in the book for the output for this uh, second 555 circuit. It basically had the, uh, let's see, this would be the uh, pin 3 output of this chip was running straight through the speaker through the resistor to ground and logically 
um, that does create a, uh, I, I confirmed this on my oscilloscope, this does create a perfect uh, square waveform, but um, you actually couldn't hear sound out of this speaker at the recommended uh, 9 volts uh, that the circuit was supposed to run at. I had to crank the voltage up to about 12. And the reason for that was I needed to put a capacitor in place between pin 3 and the input to the speaker. And what that's actually doing is, is it's filtering out the direct current and only letting alternating current um, pass through that capacitor. Because I think what was happening was the speaker would like, you know, pop up because of the square wave and it wouldn't have a chance to go back down before the next square wave would come, I think. Whereas filtering out DC and only letting AC go through, speakers just barely like pop when the uh, AC direction changes and they're ready to, to move again when the next AC change occurs. So it's, um, it's something to watch out for if you're ever trying to power a speaker um, with a, a square wave that's being fed just by direct current. Um, throw a capacitor in between and it should work a lot better. So that's all I got for experiment 17 and experiment 18 I think starts uh, driving us toward a uh, an actual LED display of some kind uh, or rather a uh, numeric LED display. So looking forward to that. So I will see you guys then.